We're in the Woodlands, Texas tonight where the Texas Patriot Pack hosted Heritage Foundation's Jim, Senator Jim DeMint. Senator, welcome to Texas. Well, thank you, Bob. It's great to be back. Last time I was close to this neighborhood, we were campaigning for Ted Cruz, so I'm very grateful for the folks here. I saw you there. Sarah Palin was yes. here, and it was a, a great lead into a successful election. It was. It was a hot day, but it was energetic, and it was uh, really um, encouraged me that the people of Texas were really engaged in that campaign. So, uh, And Ted has done very well for the state and the country. He really has done well, and right now with all the, the things that are going on with Obamacare, there's an interesting break going on here in Texas between Senator Cruz and Senator Cornyn. Um, Senator Cornyn describes it as a difference in tactics. Mm -hmm. and it reminds me of World War II when General Montgomery and General Patton had different tactics, but we're fighting for the same end game. Are we fighting for the same end game here, or is there really a difference in what we're trying to accomplish between these two? No, I think all the conservatives want to stop Obamacare, and I think you're right. It's just a matter of what some people think is possible or practical. Um, and frankly, I do think the odds are against us in a lot of ways, mm -hmm. uh, except we've seen those change dramatically over the last four to six weeks as more and more Americans have found out what this is really going to do to them. So I think it's an issue worth fighting for because I'm I'm really concerned what it's going to do to our country and all the people. So we know, um, those of us who've been in the Congress, that the only way to get the president to the table is not to fund that law. If it's funded, then it's all over. Uh, so I think it's a fight we need to have. I don't know where it'll end up, but hopefully conservatives will end up on the same page. Well, I hope we will, and, and with the end game in mind uh, that we need to stop this now because we can't wait for it to, to die out on its own. Once no. these federal programs start, they never, no. never stop. No. Now, last week I was down on the Arizona border with Mexico, mm -hmm. and um, you know, border security there, everybody says the violence is on the other side, but really it's, it's moving across over there as we've seen recently. Tell us about the Heritage Foundation's position on border security. Well, you don't you don't have sovereign uh, a sovereign country without secure borders and you can't have an immigration policy if you can't control who's coming and going and frankly our refusal as a country to control the our southern border as you know has resulted in tens of thousands of deaths uh, and a lot of drug trafficking human trafficking is a huge problem i just had someone at this event tell me they're there are more slaves in America now than have ever been in our history. Mm -hmm. I have to go back and check those facts, but it really concerns me um, when, because it's our responsibility to control our own border. Mm -hmm. uh, we at the Heritage Foundation believe we should have a secure uh, border that we control, and we should have an immigration policy that brings people here legally who will help our country and help raise the standard of living of Americans. You, know, you mentioned human trafficking, and I think Houston has become recognized as the capital of human trafficking in the United States, unfortunately. Brandon Darby, who writes for Breitbart, has wrote about some issues with the FBI here not enforcing uh, human trafficking laws and, and because of the way the Obama administration is working with them on incentives. How do we bring that issue higher up in, into the light of, of day? Well, it's something I hope we can help with at, at Heritage. We need to be talking about it as a problem because I don't think many people know it's a problem. They think of border security as just relating to um, illegal workers. Mm -hmm. But in fact, it's much, much bigger than that. And a lot of the violence is related to the drug and human trafficking. Um, and it's, it's not going to get better unless we start taking it seriously. And what we find here in Houston is it's not just the sex industry where a lot of people think it is, but it's in construction and mm -hmm. hospitality as well. It's a really widespread, mm -hmm. widespread effort. Another issue that's important to Texas and the country is energy. And mm -hmm. I think that's something that's important to the Heritage Foundation yes, as is. well. I understand the United States is now the number one producer of energy when it comes to oil and, and natural gas. What is Heritage Foundation doing in, in trying to help with energy independence? Well, we're working at the state level to get a lot of states to, to push ahead on their own on, on private land. Uh, to, we're pushing policies at the state level uh, that would allow uh, states on the eastern seaboard to go after um, natural gas in the Atlantic off the coast. Mm -hmm. And the more we can develop our own energy, as you know, the more energy independent we can be, but also the more revenue that states and the federal government are going to uh, get from this um, and that's going to help our economy and uh, hopefully reduce our debt, lower our taxes, 
it's a huge opportunity for us. Unfortunately, a lot of the growth has been going around the federal laws rather than being supported by them. Mm -hmm. And we need to get the president to follow through on pipelines that would make a lot of sense, like Keystone. Um, but of course, Texas has been a leader for, for years in energy, and we need to make sure that continues with some of the new technology, like fracking and things that have gone beyond that. But um, from every uh, research paper I've seen is safe and, and good for the environment. It's certainly good for our country. And not only can we become energy independent, but there's an opportunity for exporting of yes. energy as well. Uh, Texas Railroad Commissioner Barry Smitherman was talking about meeting with the Germans who are very interested in, in buying Texas natural gas, so we'd like to really push that. Senator, is there anything else that you'd like to say to the readers of Texas GOB Vote? Well, no, I appreciate what you do, and I appreciate um, all the folks watching this and uh, who are involved with, with your blog and the information that you get out, uh, because active, informed citizens are the only way we're going to turn this country around. And I've seen just a relatively few people change things, just like we saw in the Ted Cruz election. Mm -hmm. Started with a handful of people, uh, good candidates, and good ideas. And so um, I just encourage people to stay informed and engaged because this country belongs to we the people. Senator, thank you very thank much. Thank you. And look forward to speaking to you again next time you're in Texas. We'll see you then.